День добрый, дорогие друзья! Сегодня в тело время не совсем обычный гость. Одна из основных фитнес-персон фитнес-индустрии с кучей подписчиков, также владелец таких марок одежды, как Body Engineers, Foy Invictus. Человек занимается музыкой, у него своя звукозаписывающая компания, он много путешествует и вообще он красавчик. <laughs> that was a long walk. <laughs> yeah, so thank you for having me, you guys. I'm gonna take him through my workout, even though I think he should be taking me through his workout. Uh, it's a pleasure to be in Russia, so you know I hope you guys enjoy my uh, my little story, and I can't wait to uh, to meet this guy more, get a training session in, and uh, let's go. Let's do it. Let's go. Now drop, just go up, then you go, uh -huh. and next time we start here and go down. Okay, okay, okay. Вот такую интересную схему нам предлагает Тави. Uh, 10 килограмм, 22 килограмма, 38 килограмм. Это все делается без отдыха по одной руке. 38 килограмм на развод. И плохие фитнес-модели пошли, да? Ну что, попробуем. Зимба. Следующий подход уже идет дроп сетом. То есть начинаем с самой большой гантели. Также делаем по, я думаю, 10 раз. И по 10 скидываем в обратную сторону. Что сказать, схема интересная. Я, честно говоря, не любитель больших весов на плечи, потому что нагрузка немножко распределяется, но... Для разнообразия, почему нет? Окей, okay. вот такой вот второй подходик. А, вроде и качнулись, вроде и кардио сделали. Так, ладненько. Сразу чувствуется, что у человека мало свободного времени. Потому что, как я уже сказал, Тайв занимается самыми разнообразными вещами. Поэтому я думаю, что он... Это делает специально, вроде как и потренировался, и вроде кардио сделал заодно. So uh, basically what I what I kind of learned over the years is that um, to get that really rounded shoulder look, everybody's focused on the front and the side, but it's actually the rear delt that when you when you develop it, it starts to sweep around the front. So I started focusing on my rear delt, and all of a sudden I noticed my my shoulders were uh, rounding out a lot more. And when I started off with an exercise like this that really blasts the volume, that really pump up, and then the sets after this will do heavy with lower, lower reps. And I just saw my shoulders explode. And it, you really notice that I'm not a huge guy, he's huge, but my shoulders are really standing out. 
So it's uh, this is my favorite exercise, and I start with it every time. Tavi, three года назад ты задумал свою марку, свою линию одежды, Body Engineers. Сейчас, куда бы я ни приезжал, в Кувейты, на Фибо в Германию, Америка, Европа, я везде вижу твою одежду. Это действительно успех, за что большое тебе уважение. Значит, ты угадал, угадал с настроением, угадал с тем, чего хочет народ, угадал с вот этим направлением новым. Раньше были только брутальные, здоровые ребята, сейчас же это эстетика, сейчас очень много молодых людей, которые занимаются. Как ты почувствовал да, в тот момент, что индустрия а, а, жаждет да, твоей одежды? А, как ты угадал с этим? А, я знаю, что ты даже сам рисовал свой логотип. А, расскажи немножко про это и как сейчас обстоят дела с твоей маркой. Yeah, so about three years ago is when the actual clothing thing started. Uh, Body Engineers was originally an online coaching. So I was only doing online coaching plans for people. And I was making shirts for, just for promotion. And what I started noticing is people liked the logo. So that kind of got me the idea to, okay, let's see what I can do with clothing. Uh, and one of the things that I, I disliked about the whole bodybuilding and fitness uh, industry is that there's kind of like a really big stereotype, like bodybuilders don't know how to dress. They're big and they're stupid. And yes. <laughs> so I really, I really dislike this you know, because I was a DJ. I did aerospace engineering. Uh, building airplanes and making music. So I, I was with a lot of you know cool people and I thought to myself why am I being stereotyped into this this crazy idea. So I thought to myself I'm gonna change something up. I'm gonna make cool clothing that is born in the gym. You know bodybuilders are the ones that are gonna make it famous but I'm gonna make sure that the whole world likes it. So I took fashion trends from, from Amsterdam uh, from my friends in, in France And you know, we did crazy stuff, cuts like this, tapered them, uh, jackets with, with zippers to the sides, uh, you know, uh, jeans that were actually joggers uh, with a lot of designs on it that, you know, normally you would go to the city and you would find this in a nice shop. So I took bits and pieces, put it together my own way um, and just basically took a risk because everybody thought, yeah, what, when I made this stringer, like, why is it so weird? You know, it's, it's crooked. It's a, And now everybody wants it. Everybody wants to wear it because it's it's different. And uh, that was the most important thing: is we we basically carved a niche. So we we went into an area that that nobody else dared to. You know, we took bodybuilders, fitness people, and I pulled things from fashion and I mixed it. And uh, that that's basically the the way that it evolves. Um, and people love it because now you can be a bodybuilder. You can like to get big and, and be fit and aesthetic. Um, you're also going to have style now. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's kind of what my goal was and it's working um, and we're pushing further and further into it now. So it's getting, it's getting crazy. People everywhere I go, I get asked for photos that people are wearing my stuff. So I'm very proud and it's not, it's not only me, it's the whole team. Uh, the people that wear it, eventually they're the ones that, you know, that represent it. And you know, your friends first look at you as the bodybuilder. Oh, he's just a bodybuilder. And all of a sudden like, hey, I like his clothes too now. <laughs> So you, you, you become kind of a, a trendsetter. So it's, uh, it's worked. Uh, I'm very happy with it and I love all the people that support it and uh, it's just getting bigger and bigger. So. Я также знаю, что помимо Body Engineers ты владеешь или совладеешь вместе с Лазаром маркой Fall Invictus. В чем смысл, да? Почему пошло разделение брендов? Немножко разные аудитории или... Или в чем дело? То есть, по сути, одежда и та, и та молодежная, одежда и та, и та для активных людей, которые уделяют внимание здоровому образу жизни и так далее. Почему тогда разделение брендов? Может быть, более премиальный сегмент? Расскажи про это. So basically the whole idea with, with Forum Victus is kind of the same way that like the old school bodybuilding clothes were really ugly and you know you got stereotyped when you uh when you wore it 
Uh, I also, yeah, being in Europe and being around, you know, other creative people, artists, DJs, they're always wearing Dolce & Gabbana, Gucci, Versace, and I just started noticing, you know, with all these brands, they promote themselves with really skinny guys that have no gains, and they're just really, it's kind of lame to see, um, you know, these, these guys, these fashion models promoting these brands, and we don't get any of that, kind of that attention, so I thought, I'm, we're still working on it. It's not anywhere as big as it is uh, with body engineers, but it, we're basically want to push into that that segment of Gucci, Versace. The quality is is, is higher, um, but now it's going to be promoted by guys that are slightly more more aesthetic. So uh, the di the biggest difference is, is with BE is we we won't go that expensive. You won't you don't have a T-shirt for 80 euros, um, and with you know Foreign Victus you have underwear. You have uh, we're going to come with leather jackets. We're, we're coming out with jeans next week, uh, very nice jeans, uh, and jackets, bomber jackets. So it's, it's really more just for the city. You don't use Foreign Victus for in the gym. Um, but again, it's going to be a brand that represents, uh, you know, the muscular guys. Not per se huge, but, you know, guys with, with style that aren't necessarily skinny as fuck. You know? So that's, uh, that's kind of the idea behind Foreign Victus. And I did it with Lazar because he's one of the... Yeah, he's also well known for his for his style. Uh, you know, it's not all about the abs. You know, he's got the beard, he's got the look, he's got the the, the the fashion sense as well. So it was just a perfect mix with my creativity, his image, and uh, we're working together to see. Same thing with BE, how far we can take it. Техника выполнения, да, немножко другая. Первое упражнение показал в своей в своей такой определенной технике, и второе, то есть он кладет полностью на трапеции, причем э, спинка она не вертикальна, она откинута немножко назад, полностью кладет штангу на трапеции, то есть дает некий отдых и выжимает. Почему? Сейчас он вам расскажет. Okay, so um, one of the most important things that I that I realized with myself over the years is that you do a lot of chest, you know, everybody wants that big chest, you're always pumping chest, and you're actually training your front shoulder a lot already during the week when you're doing your chest exercises. So for me, this will be the only frontal, frontal shoulder exercise that I do. And the reason that I do it, um, you know, behind the back with an inclined bench like this, is I just find the angle feels more natural. Uh, I used to get a lot of shoulder injuries because I was doing heavy chest, and then shoulder day I was doing heavy shoulders, and it was just a very, very big overload. Um, so now I do less weight for my frontal, frontal shoulder and just focus on it and squeeze it out. And uh, this angle I just find is the most natural. Uh, and everybody's gonna be a little bit different. So you just angle the bench differently. Some people do it in front of their chest. They feel that that's a bit more uh, natural feeling. For me, the most important thing is if it, if it feels good uh, and you're not overloading it so much because you already do so much on the chest day. Да, действительно, очень интересная техника. Почему-то я никогда не задумался о том, что можно сжать из-за головы и немножко откинуть э, спинку назад. Почему-то за 10 лет я про это не подумал. Вот, интересная техника, да, действительно, когда ты кладешь и делаешь... Это еще от Лисукова пошло. Может быть, он фанат Лисукова, не знаю. Когда Лисуков всегда жал и ставил на 2 секунды штангу на грудь, потом опять выжимал. В этом есть свои плоды. А, таким образом... Из полностью растянутого положения действительно чувствуется задняя дельта, как она включается. Вот. Поэтому Тави я звал как э, фитнес-модель, как э, владельца компании. А на самом деле открыл нам еще один секретик в нашу копилочку с вами. Поэтому это круто. One more set. One more set. You can do a little bit more weight. Let's put a, put a ten on it. Uh -huh. Я как человек, который тоже немножко отошел от спорта и немножко залез в бизнес, знаю, что на самом деле ведение любого бизнеса – это 90% рутинная работа. То есть все думают, что мы там сидим на кухне, дегустируем 
постоянно нашу еду и больше ничем не занимаемся. Так же, как и про тебя, наверняка думаю, что ты только рисуешь эскизы и ничем другим не занимаешься. Но это действительно, особенно с твоей дистрибьюцией по всему миру, это действительно большая юридическая работа и так далее. Как раз таки вот эта работа такая серая, монотонная, она и отнимает большую часть времени. Как ты с этим справляешься, как ты делегируешь полномочия на свою команду, либо все стараешься контролировать и тянуть сам, и как ты распределяешь свое время между здоровым образом жизни, таким фитнес-лайфстайлом, путешествиями, музыкой еще занимаешься. Твой такой, скажем, распорядок дня и жизненный распорядок, как все успеть? Специально для наших зрителей. Yeah, so um, basically, kind of the way that it went about like three, four years ago is I was uh, I was DJing to uh, to pay my my tuition at school. I was doing aerospace engineering, um, and I was training. I was training to do uh, muscle mania at that time uh, for fitness model and junior bodybuilder. And kind of kind of what happened was, I mean, it was a little bit like chance. Uh, when I was a DJ, I had to learn how to make my own flyers, you know, Photoshop, how to make my own websites. Um, when I was doing aerospace engineering, uh, I learned how to program, uh, pro which is kind of the same with, with anything, HTML, you know, programming uh, numbers, it's, it's similar. Um, and then I had obviously my, my passion for, for music, for fashion, uh, and I was, I was a soccer player. So whenever I trained, I also trained with, with discipline. Um, so it's really not really a secret for about two, three years. <laughs> I, I had no life. I literally just uh, went to school, trained, uh, worked on the weekends, and uh, it, it kind of just all came together like two, two years ago. I built my own website. Um, I did my own photography because I learned how to do photography for my music. Um, and then with the designing on, on Illustrator, on Photoshop for the clothing, uh, it, it all started to, to come together. And now, obviously, I have a, a big team. Um, there's about, I think, 40 athletes, models from around the world that promote body engineers. In our HQ in Amsterdam, Amsterdam we have about 20 people, um, you know, who do the design now. All I do is I give them a direction. I want the cut like this, the colors like this, the, the style needs to go this direction, that direction. And then they get a, I get a report at the end of the week from my designers. I say, okay, these are the shirts we came up with. Uh, so it all started from me. And now I kind of teach people how to do the different things that I used to do by myself. Uh, so that's kind of how it evolves, and I think that's the, the way that any, any successful business uh, or any success in, in anything, in music and bodybuilding and fashion and, and fitness clothing, you got to do everything yourself in the beginning so you know how to do it right, uh, you know how to do it how you like to do it, and then you teach people around you how to take those tasks off your hand, and then you can keep focusing on more and more and more specific, specific things, and what I can now focus on is is the the branding so you know what is what is body engineers for me it's it's not just the gym you know it's being successful in your work if you're a student if you're a businessman if you're if you're a dad if you're a mom if you're a soldier just doing everything in your life 100 percent. so it's not just going to the gym and that's that's how be has kind of evolved and spread into you know other other demographics it's not only people that uh that do fitness and It came from, from that, so it's essentially, I did everything myself, I had no life, so I basically sacri sacrificed a good, uh, about three, four years of, you know, not having any girlfriend, <laughs> not, not going out, obviously I was a DJ, so I was out anyway, but it's different, and then now it's just, I got a foundation, so that's the secret, and uh, I guess, like I said, any, any success in any, any other industry, Um, I believe comes from this. If you look at Apple, Windows, you know, they all started in the garage. They all built their own computer, taught other people how to make the same thing. And then, you know, in 20, 30 years, you have, a, you know, you have Apple and Windows. So it's, uh, it's like this. This is my secret. <laughs> wow, great. Yeah. And as you might have noticed, I don't, uh, I don't like to bounce on anything with shoulders. Uh, I had an injury about a year ago where I couldn't even train shoulders for like three, four months because I was bouncing too much, I was doing too much weight. 
So um, especially with the frontal exercises, I always do a little pause and then you really know you're not using your, your tendons, you're just using the muscle. Ray. Упражнение номер три от нашего деятельного парня, который начинал, кстати, с онлайн-коучинга, тренировал людей по интернету. Сейчас он тренирует меня и вас в том числе. Тави, правильно ли я понял, что эта нагрузка идет что-то среднее между средней и передней дельтой? То есть движение такое чуть в сторону, чуть вперед. Okay, so uh, so this one what I what I like to use it for is to really get that capping. Uh, so it's not necessarily a frontal, it's kind of a more of a side uh, side raise, and the tension here is really on the this piece of the the cap. So especially when you start to you know to lose body fat, I find that when you you've developed this one, you get a nicer cut here, nicer insertion. So I use this one really for the... Yeah, Кстати, да, многие забывают о том, что нагрузка, когда ты пользуешься нижним блоком, она в нижней точке уже присутствует. Вот. Таким образом, у тебя плечо уже напряжено. То, о чем говорит Тави, да? То есть мы, мы прорабатываем именно с э, самой нижней точки. Ну так, ну что, попробуем. Футболка Body Engineers плюс 10 в силе. Окей? Okay. Yeah. I really get the full full stretch that really okay okay stretching it out. Yeah, you Good. can you can stretch stretch it out even further. So really okay really pull this. it back that you're uh -huh. getting a full. То есть еще больше растягиваешь. Because the the shoulder muscles are very short, so in order to get them to round out, you you really have to try and and stretch them. So when you're doing your exercises, if you do them too, too short, you're not getting the, uh, the stretch in the muscle. And the longer your muscles are, the bigger they can get. So with everything, not just this, you know, when you're doing your, your rear, rear delts, you gotta really stretch them out, because it's very short, so. Последнее упражнение на сегодня, потому что Тави уже нужно улетать, между прочим, мы его тут держим перед аэропортом. Обычное разведение на заднюю дельту, но опять-таки в необычном исполнении. Вы видите, как Тави специально выгибает спинку ровнее. Сейчас мы это попробуем, опишем свои впечатления, потому что многие качки, многие атлеты, они держат голову специально внизу опускают голову делают но ну, мне кажется они делают это потому что это просто легче so as I, as I mentioned before uh, when I train shoulders I actually focus a lot more on the on the rear um, like I said just because when you're doing chest throughout the other days in the in the week you're already getting the front uh, so on most most physiques that I see I always see that the the rear delt is lacking in comparison with the front and the side so we're doing another rear delt uh, exercise uh, to finish it off. And one of the other exercises that a lot of people ask me about, you know, why don't you do the, the upward row is, again, the same thing. I either do the front, frontal press or the upward row, so I, I'll mix it up like that. Uh, but I always focus my entire shoulder session on, on the back because of the, you know, the rounding. Тави, ну и последний вопрос, хотя вопросов к тебе очень много, с тобой очень интересно общаться. Наверняка ты помимо меня мотивируешь и вдохновляешь большое количество наших зрителей. Последний вопрос, планы твои на жизнь, потому что в свои 26, а Тави 26, я напоминаю, ты добился уже очень многого. Что дальше? Может быть, президент uh, Голландии? <laughs> Что? Расскажи про свои планы. Um, no, so yeah, definitely with fitness, I I don't want to say I've reached 
the top of fitness yet, you know. Uh, that would be egoistic to say that. I mean, there's, there's a lot more you can do, do with fitness. You can reach even more people. Uh, but me personally, I'm, I'm still in love with fitness, with bodybuilding. Um, but I'm starting to take more of the, the music back into, into my life again. So I left the music to do the fitness. Now I'm going to take the music back in. Uh, hopefully be DJing at Tomorrowland uh, next year. Uh, making more tracks, you know, big festivals. And basically, may maybe it's a, a good comparison. Do what Arnold did with acting. I want to do that with, with music. So that's kind of my, uh, yeah, my next goal. And after that, I, I have no idea. Maybe, maybe president of the Netherlands. They don't have a president, but <laughs> uh, you never know. So that, that's the next step. Спасибо тебе большое, что ты поделился с нами своими секретами. Удачи тебе в будущем и всегда буду рад тебя видеть и в Москве и везде везде. Мы с тобой часто пересекаемся. Удачи тебе. Я еще вернусь. Я еще вернусь. Я еще вернусь. Okay, I gotta do it perfectly. Я еще вернусь. Yes. Russia, thank you so much for having me. Everybody here has been amazing, and the only thing I really can say, I didn't see enough. So, я еще вернусь.